What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 26 beta 7 to registered developers and this should be out for public beta testers very soon. Now along with this release, we also got the seventh beta for iPadOS 26, watchOS 26, macOS 26 Tahoe, tvOS 26, and HomePod version 26, along with visionOS 26. But as always, in this video, we are talking all about iOS 26 beta 7. So you can see the size here came in once again at a very large 10.44 gigabytes. Now, of course, that's not going to take up all that space on your device. A lot of those files are just being overwritten, but that is the size here for beta 7. So let's go ahead and check out the new build. And taking a look at that build number, it's 23 a 5326a so we do have an a at the end of the build number which is always a good sign and if we go down here and check out the modem firmware that is 2.04.06 on the iphone 16 series and that is the same modem firmware by the way as beta 6 so no modem firmware update here with beta 7 but we should see one with beta 8 or the rc all right so now what's new here in ios 26 beta 7 now as I mentioned last week in my beta six what's new video and also in my Apple weekly episode I would not be going into these updates expecting many changes whatsoever typically beta 7 and beta 8 updates don't have much in terms of new visual features a lot of these are going to be bug fixes and just really small tweaks at this point in the game we should be seeing more visual changes potentially with the RC release after Apple unveils new features at the iPhone event but as of right now I would not really be going into these updates expecting a lot to change at least until the RC. Okay, so with that being said, what's actually new here in beta seven? And the first thing has to do with the onboarding setup that you get when you first update your device. Before you go to unlock it, I did get the onboarding screen again on my device, and it looks a little bit different than it did in beta six. This was also present in beta six, but it does look slightly different here in beta seven. And this, of course, is where Apple shows off the liquid glass design and some of the other changes as well. And speaking of iOS 26, something else that was greatly improved in that update are the app opening animation. So when you go in and out of an application, it's super quick. Like beta six made a massive difference from beta five and all previous builds. And I have to say that here with beta seven, I think the animation speeds are even faster. So it's not nearly as significant of a difference as it was going from beta five to beta six. But I can tell you that the animations do feel a bit faster and a bit smoother than they did in beta six, which is saying something because beta six animations were out of this world. They were so quick. Look at that bug right there with notes, by the way. But I have to say the animations feel even faster here with beta seven, which is a great sign. We also have a change inside of our settings. So if we head into settings and go into battery and then go down here to power mode and we have adaptive power turned on, there's a brand new toggle in beta seven that was not there in beta six for adaptive power notifications. So if you want to receive the notification in your notification center when adaptive power mode is activated and when it's working, you can have that turned on. It is on by default, but if you don't want to receive notifications indicating that adaptive power is working in the background, you can go ahead and turn that off now, whereas you did not have that option to turn off notifications before. And while we're in the battery section, we also have a change when you plug your device in to charge and you have a charge limit set. So since I have a charge limit set below 100%, it gives us this new text down here that says iPhone will occasionally charge to 100% even if the charge limit is set below 100%. So if I go onto my beta six device, which is right here, same section we plug that in, also have a charge limit set. You can see that it does not appear on beta six. Also in beta six, when you are charging your device and you tapped on the information bubble right here. So if you tap on that, it would take you to this page where it talks about charging your iPhone battery and just info about charging your iPhone's battery. However, here in beta seven, if we do the same thing and we plug in our device and then tap on the information bubble right there you can see it just takes us to basically a broken link it just takes us to the iphone user guide instead of the page that it's supposed to take us to so that should be fixed with the next beta i would assume when you tap on the eye there and if you look down even further i'm not sure if it's just me but it looks like the app and system activity 
text right there, that little mini heading is a little bit more bold. It's a little bit darker than it was on beta six. And it seems like this text in general is just a little bit darker than it was previously. And if we go back to the settings and go into action button and we go to any of the action button toggles right here, you will notice that the wallpaper has changed on the iPhone that it shows. So you can see that before it showed that different color right there. Now it's more of like a blue color, which could indicate it's being based off of the default wallpaper in iOS 26. It's not really clear enough to tell for sure, but you could see that the color has changed there for the screen in the action button menu. Now here's a change that we knew was coming with iOS 26 beta seven. And that is that we now have blood oxygen monitoring available in the health application, just like we saw with iOS 18.6.1, which released to the public last week. So this new beta does implement the new calculations and everything like that for blood oxygen. So if you go into your health app and then go down here to respiratory, you will see blood oxygen right there and it will work now with your Apple watch as long as you are updated on the Apple watch as well to watch OS 26 beta seven. And the reason this required an iOS update along with a watch OS update is because the calculations for the blood oxygen levels are now done on the iPhone instead of on the watch. So the watch still collects the data, but now the processing and the calculations happens on the iPhone instead. And of course, the results are also now shown in the health application. They are not shown on the watch. And by the way, since I know I will get some questions about it, this does work if your watch is on watch OS 11.6.1. So if you have not updated your watch to the 26 betas, it will still work with blood oxygen if you update your iPhone to the latest iOS 26 beta. And it will also work if you have your watch on watch OS 26 beta seven. Now here's a much needed bug fix in iOS 26 beta seven. So screenshots are now fixed. So not only did we have an issue with screenshots in beta six, where they would be darker than expected. So if you take a screenshot of something, it would be really dark. And the only way to fix that was to go into your settings into general, and then down here to screen capture and turn on HDR. That was the only way to resolve that issue where screenshots had the regular brightness. Well, that has been fixed with beta seven. I did confirm this by taking my own screenshots and now they look normal. They're not darkened anymore, but that's not the only bug fix related to screenshots because also a lot of people had issues before when they would take a screenshot and go up here and do copy and delete. A lot of times they would try to paste that image in an application or, you know, in the notes or something like that. And it would not paste it. So that function was just simply not working for some people in beta six, but that has now been resolved in beta seven, according to those users who had that issue before. Now, unfortunately we do still have some more visual bugs in iOS 26 beta seven that were there previously, and they are still not fixed. For example, if you go into settings, privacy and security, location services, and then go down until you see wallet. We still have a blank glyph there, so it's just not populated. So that was there in beta six and it's still not fixed with beta seven. I'm sure that will be fixed soon, but that is just a visual bug. And then some people were saying that the liquid glass has changed here in iOS 26 beta seven compared to beta six. But as you can see here, same wallpaper, same section on the screen, and they both look the same to me. So there are some things that may look a little bit different because of the placement of the app icons in the background, but I can tell you after looking at both of these, the liquid glass seems about the same to me on beta seven as it did in beta six, not just in the control center, also in like the music application and places like that, where you see the liquid glass right there with the menu bar in the bottom and also in the app store, it looks about the same to me as it did in beta six. So thankfully no tweaks to liquid glass here with beta seven, which I say thankfully, because I think the liquid glass right now is in a perfect spot. I think it's really tweaked and done well right now. I'm sure there will be more changes to it, but I'm really liking liquid glass at this point. I should also mention that my device was noticeably cooler after installing this seventh beta. So with betas one through six, I was always able to feel the heat from the back of my phone. But for some reason here with beta seven, I did not get nearly as much heat even from the start. It also cooled down faster. So the heat I did have, it did cool down faster. So that could also be something that helps with both performance and for battery life. If you guys had the same experience with heat, let me know. And then as far as the release notes go, Apple has not published those as of the time of recording. However, I would expect to see even more new bug fixes with this update. So beta six fixed a lot of bugs that we had in previous betas, and I would expect that to continue here with beta seven. And I will leave that linked down in the description below as well. If you do want to read through those once they get published. Now, as far as the overall performance goes, performance feels excellent here in beta seven. Now I don't 
don't think it's a huge difference from beta 6. Like I mentioned, the animation speed does feel a little bit faster than it did on beta 6, which is a great sign. But as far as overall raw performance, I would not really be expecting anything major in terms of performance improvements here. You can see my Geekbench score right here compared to what we did previously. So it is actually higher in both single core and multi core. But again, don't expect a major change in performance unless you had any issues performance related. Like if you had bugs, if you had a lot of stutter that could be fixed with this beta. However, a lot of the stutter for me was fixed in the last beta. So expect some more fluid animations, but don't expect anything major. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life on beta six was the best yet for me on these iOS 26 betas. And I would expect that to continue here with beta seven. So we are sitting at 88%. Not sure what I started the video with, but that does seem to be pretty solid here for the battery life on beta seven. So I will bring you guys Guys, a more updated take on the battery life after I've actually used it for a little while. I will be using it, of course, on my main device throughout the week, and I will let you know how battery life is later on in the week in my Apple Weekly episode. All right, so now let's talk about when to expect iOS 26 beta 8, which very well could be the final beta before the RC. So I would expect that. I would expect us to continue a weekly release. So that means that we should be seeing beta 8 next week on the week of August 25th, the final full week of August is when we should see beta eight. Now, after we get to beta eight, I would expect us to skip a couple of weeks until we get to the iPhone event. So typically the iPhone event, if I had to guess, it's gonna be on Tuesday, September 9th, but it should be on the week of the eighth at some point. So if it is on the ninth, that means that we should be expecting the RC to come after the event on Tuesday, September 9th. But again, it's gonna depend on when Apple actually hosts that event, which we should find out when that's gonna be next week, by the way, that's when Apple should announce that. So after that, of course, we are gonna see the final release that following week after the RC. So that would put us right here at Monday, September 15th, if those dates actually come true. And then of course, after iOS 26, a lot of people always ask me, should I get off the betas? Well, I would say no, because the 26.1 betas are gonna start pretty soon after the final release of iOS 26. And we'll talk more about that at a later date, but that's what to expect in the near term future with iOS 26. So there you have it, guys. That is iOS 26 beta 7, a small update, just as expected, just as I have prepared you guys for last week. And I'm telling you once again, don't expect much from beta eight. Again, RC could get us some new features. Apple may announce some new hardware based features, and we could see those in the software of iOS 26. But Apple can't unveil those yet because they'd give away some of the announcements some of the event. So that's typically why we see some new features in the RC that are just kind of being held until after that iPhone event. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS 26 and iPhone 17 videos in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.